bought a lot of toys recently. Hello everybody, it's Ace, your favorite former Twink here. Coming to hang out with a super chill, relaxing toy haul vlog. Recently, I came <laughs> into possession of a wonderful blind lot of Star Trek Playmates action figures. Um, something like 50 figures. Um, and I kind of don't know what I have here. I bought so many, it required, well, technically three boxes. I do know what one of them is because this was actually the thing that spurred me getting the rest, but I thought it'd be fun to open it up and see just what I got myself into. So we'll start with what spurred on this big toy haul. Um, something that I kind of figured that I would never buy, but now I'm actually really interested to see it. Uh, this being the Toy Fair Geordie LaForge alternate version of the alien from the episode Identity Crisis. In my last toy haul vlog, I got really excited by how good that toy looked. And I knew that there was this variant available for it. So I figured, why not, uh, why not pick it up? Because I am a sucker for two things. Number one, glow in the dark action figures. Number two, translucent action figures or like, translucent-ish action figures. So that's what this variant is. So in the episode of Identity Crisis, when Jordy got, <sighs> after he had been turned or was in the process of turning, um, the aliens on the planet, <sighs> which names escaped me at the moment, and I think it's one of those planets that I couldn't even actually pronounce the name of. Anyway, um, uh, the aliens, when they were shined with a UV light, um, had a iridescent blue glow about them. Um, and that's what this figure right here tried to replicate. Um, so let's take a look. So we've got not much, which is bad on par. Um, the uh, Jean-Luc Picard uh, uh, in the blue duty uniform from Tapestry uh, when he wakes up in the alternate timeline. Um, was pretty much the same thing. Um, I believe that only came with the stand and the uh, and a phaser, I think. And that was that was all that came with. So I'm not surprised that this doesn't really have much in it. Um, it's kind of just wrapped in a basic plastic bag. I can see a stand and I think one of the flashlights that they used in the episode. So let's see, where is the opening here? It's right there. And oh, I can already see that this is, this is right up my alley. Um, so if you've ever seen the Transporter series, this is very similar. And oh, oh yeah, big time. Look at that, that's so dope. Ah, oh, I dig this guy so much. Hello? Are we going to focus? Hello. I dig this so, so so much. That is a very cool figure. So here we go. We've got that nice translucent look inside of it. Like you can see right through him. Now, if you had like a light source, um, which I do right here, uh, let's see. Oh, that's gonna be pink. gonna work the way I want to, oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, you can really see. You can really see how that kind of shines and reflects the light 
inside of it, especially when you go back behind it like that. Oh, so dope. So cool, I love it. Big fan of this action figure. Big fan of translucent action figures. Like I said, glow in the dark shit. That really just like hits me like deep. All right. So we'll move on to small box. Small box here. So like I said, just perusing through eBay and just happened to find a nice lot of toys. Um, I say blind box, um, not necessarily blind. There was just so many that, you know, by the time it shipped, I forgot what was even in it. Um, so let's take a look in the small box. Let's see what we got. Um, yeah, I really don't know what I'm getting myself into here. I can see some goodies already. Oh. Oh, okay. Right on. Pretty dope. Right out of the gate. So it looks like these come with some kind of accessories, even though there, I don't believe there are any accessories in this set. Uh, we got a duty, not duty uniform. We have a uh, dress uniform, Jean-Luc Picard and Will Riker from the six figure set that had uh, Cisco and Kira and Kirk and Spock in dress uniforms. Well, just Kirk and Spock in dress uniforms. Uh, whatever reason, they couldn't be bothered to put Kira or Ben in their dress uniforms. Um, cool, cool, nice little figure. Um, speaking of the transporter figures, um, no base, no accessories. We got ourselves a Hikaru Sulu transporter figure. That is really cool to find loose. I have a complete set of these, um, but it's rare to find these figures just kind of out in the open. Now this was actually, I never, I, while on the one hand I do understand why they did these figures like they did, I would have much preferred it if we had just had these figures for the TOS in this gold sparkle to actually more accurately reflect the transporter as opposed to the figures that we got, um, which depending on which division you were in, that was the color of your transporter dematerialization and for better or for worse. Um, I have seen some people try to customize these so that they actually fit. They don't ever really look right because um, so much of it, so much of that dematerialization carries up into the body itself. Um, but that's, that's a nice little find right there. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have, we have a, a Captain Beverly Crusher uh, from All Good Things, which is good because I have been wanting to do a custom Catherine Janeway. Uh, from uh, the Voyager finale endgame for quite some time. Um, I have, I'm in the middle of doing, after I do this video, I've kind of actually have to tackle the customs video that I've been kind of planning for a little while, talking about some of the customs that I have, showing some of the customs that I've made, um, a Voyager era, uh, uh, or rather a, a end game version of Janeway is is my next one after I do my con action figure. Um, but more on that later on in a future video. This one, really dope. And the head too, I really dig the head for Beverly. This is easily, bar none, far and away, the best Beverly figure out there. Um, I would actually prefer to take this take the head off of this one, re-sculpt the hair so that it's more accurate. It looks so much more like Gates McFadden than the actual Beverly figure that's out there. That was, that one has such a smushed up face. Never really dug that figure a whole lot. Anyway, uh, we have a duty uniform, Miles O'Brien, right on. Cool beans, cool beans. Now I'm about to do something a little strange here. I don't know if any of you do this. 
but I do this all the time. So when I order, and I can, I can smell it already. When I order figures off of eBay, one of my, uh, one of the things you're always kind of messing around with is the potential of buying something that smells like cigarettes. I bought a whole uh, classic Star Trek TOS set and God damn it if that whole thing didn't come yellowed and bashed and reeking of cigarettes. So I'm going to do my best Jared Pollen impression and I'm going to give these this set a little sniff test to see I think the O'Brien's got a little bit of a trace, trace scent on there. So I have asthma and I can't smoke, so I'm never around cigarettes. So usually I can pick them up, pick up the nicotine scent really well. O'Brien might be the only questionable one. He may be going into a bag with a dryer sheet sometime in the future. All right, so rounding things out, we've got a Wave 1 Lieutenant Commander Data with the rarity of, especially loose, of having both the forearm and back pieces intact. Which is nice, because you, normally you don't get that. Normally that's kind of hard to find. Our last one is a, ah! I seem to recall now why I ordered this set because it filled a lot of little gaps that I didn't have, such as the wave two of the TNG line, which has the uh, Jean-Luc Picard in the season one, season two duty uniforms. Uh, figure that is a whole in my personal collection. So that does it for box one. Seven really good figures there. I'm, 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 I'm very impressed with that. Especially with, with each of them having a bag full of accessories that sort of kind of do go with the figures appropriately. Very nice, very nice, all right. All right. Now for the big boy. Uh, this is a big box full of toys. So I will probably just zoom through this because I could probably, and will most likely, even though I'm going to try and be efficient with the time here, uh, we'll probably rattle on in some tangents talking about these figures. Um, so I'm hoping for some, some gaps to be filled here, which I already have well, technically I only really have the one. I have every of the other seven down there that I've already pulled out. I already have those. So let's see. Well, right off the bat, right off the bat, I can see a couple of things. Um, two figures that I don't have. Three figures that I don't have. Uh, going back to <laughs> going back to Toy Fair exclusives, cats and kittens, days and them's. We've got a tapestry Picard, not a tapestry Picard like the 1701 series, but the other tapestry Picard in the blue uniform, um, which I personally dig. It is one of my favorite bodies. Um, this generic command uniform, um, duty uniform from uh, the next gen era. Um, I love this body. It is so efficient. You can use it. They've used it multiple times uh, for Jordy and for uh, O'Brien as well as Picard. Um, I customized one of these for Data. Um, and um, I think I think I have a, do they do another one with this body? No, the Barkley doesn't have, because the Barkley has the weird long torso. So cool. Uh, another one of those to have is very nice. Um, as for another figure that I don't have, that is a gap. Um, 
I'm a big time fan of Playmate sculpting. I've talked about this before, how it feels like with certain aliens um, in this line, it feels like it could fit seamlessly in with any of the other Playmates lines, Ninja Turtles, Toxic Crusaders, even Dick Tracy. Uh, but here we have a Tosk from the Deep Space Nine episode. Really like, like excellent sculpting work. Uh, by the crew at Varner Studios there. Oh, love that. All right, another figure I don't have coming up. Hold on a sec. We may be doing a couple of these in a Ziploc bag with some dryer sheets. Another figure I don't have that I'm finally glad to have uh, my personal favorite figure of Guinan, uh, that being Guinan from Generations. Now, I know none of us are a big fan of the lack of articulation in the Generations line, but I personally feel like the, I personally feel like this is the superior Guinan figure. Um, it just kind of lacks the puffiness that the other guy in figure had. Um, and I personally care more for Whoopi in purple than I do in that red. It's a little too... I don't like it. I am noticing that there is some articulation on the legs, even though it can't get past the bottom of her skirt. <sighs> oh well. So that's a lot. There's a lot of figures in here. So let's just start kind of rolling through some of these. We've got ourselves a wave one Lieutenant Commander Worf. No, I said Worf. I, I said Worf, not, not you. I said Worf. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, we have a standard Wave 1 Deep Space Nine O'Brien, uh, which would be nice because I have been wanting to make a Generations accurate Will Riker, and that is the perfect body for it. Uh, let's see, we have Q, uh, which I have multiple of. Uh, we have, uh, oh, we've got, I have this? I'm pretty sure I have this. Uh, we've got a Governor Wharf, also, <laughs> also from All Good Things. And going back to Generations once again, uh, we have... See now, here's a figure that I don't mind they did not do a whole lot of articulation for because they didn't need to. Uh, we have Bator. Um, simple. I mean, there was no way they'd ever be able to articulate the legs. So you just, you know, you get a, you lose a little bit here with the arms, but I'm okay with that because we finally get the Klingon sisters as action figures. Um, pretty dope. Oh my God, there's so many in there. Uh, we've got a Borg drone. Dime a dozen. We have a Generations. We have a Generations Geordi LaForge. Not the worst, not the best. Um, holy cow. Oh my. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm. This just made this entire purchase worth it. Now I know with like a disclaimer like that, you're probably thinking there's like an uncarded redemption data in here. Um, there is not. We've got two figures in this bag and they're both Jim Kirk. We have the classic set, Jim Kirk. But we also have a solo figure 
of Jim Kirk from where no man has gone before. This is only available in the Galileo shuttle set. And I'm not much one for the vehicles, especially because like they're so bulky. Like I don't mind the ships, but like the runabout and the Galileo and 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 the shuttlecraft uh, for the Enterprise D. I just feel like they're just like it's just they'll just take up way too much space. This is, this is a hell of a find. Um, never see this figure on its own. Um, ever. <laughs> um, you, you have to buy that whole set. So this to me, this to me, this just made this whole purchase worth it. I'm very excited by this. Hmm. Here's a figure I don't have. Stop gap. Another great alien figure. Um, again, like, I'm going to straight up say this. This looks like Toka and or Razar from the Ninja Turtles line. Um, here is Essok. Very, very cool looking figure. Um, proportions are a little weird because he's very, very top heavy um, with squat little legs. I don't know if that is accurate to the character in the episode. Uh, where they switched out the card and put him in kind of one of those like think tank thought experiment type of Johns. Um, but again, just like, you know, for a one-off character, that face sculpt is pretty darn good. Going deeper, uh, we have a Gowron. Um, always nice to have Klingon bodies. Uh, we have ah, more. Oh, perfect. I need one of these because I have one and I don't necessarily want to cut it up. Uh, it is a all good things Jordy LaForge from the alternate timeline because I can pop the head off of this one and put it on one of the movie, movie uniform bodies to make a later era Jordy LaForge. Perfect, I'm so glad that I got this guy. Um, and digging a little bit more in here. We've got a wave one Picard um, in the I don't know why Wave 1 did not have him in the duty uniform, but we have, uh, for my money, one of the nicer Picard figures just simply because he is actually pointing his finger and it's accurate to him saying, you know, the thing. Um, it's a dope little figure. I don't know why every Picard didn't come with this arm, you know? I just don't understand why. All right. Uh, oh no. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Ugh. Well, I guess this makes up for the goodness of that where no man has gone before Jim Kirk, because I got a dud. It's a first contact set from Cochrane. Uh, <laughs> I think we're all in agreement here that the first contact line is uh, not good, uh, frustrating, annoying. Why did we get that line in six inches as opposed to the four and three quarters? that we got with all the other figures. Um, <sighs> I wonder if there's any way of salvaging this. There's not even any articulation to this. Like he's like, he's got like a swivel and the arms go up and down and that's about it. He's got these weird, like why do his legs shift like that? Maybe to keep them balanced. I don't even think the face really looks like J. 
James Cromwell. Eh, looks enough like him, you know, but. All right, so we got a dud. What are you gonna do? Put him in a box and probably never look at him again. Um, ooh. Now this isn't the rarest of this set. This is probably the most common one to find, but it is nice to have one of the Target exclusive uh, first contact accurate wharfs, um, which is really no different than the uh, DS9 wharf. It just has the color swapped uniform and the ridges on the shoulders for the uh, texture that the movie uniforms had. Um, not the hardest to find, uh, but still uh, nice to actually, you know, have the actual movie uniform guys. I'm filling up my desk really quickly here. <laughs> There's not going to be a whole lot of room. Uh, let's see, we've got a Wave 2 Q. Uh, what else do we have? We have, holy shit. Savic. I got a Savic. Wow. Nice. 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 Um, Savic for my money. Um, and this might be a bold statement. Um, this is the best sculpt that Varner did for the Playmates line. Um, this is the most accurate to um, any actor or actress in the line. Um, I, I think this this looks spot on like Kirstie Alley. It captures the feel. It is so lifelike. Um, and this is a dope figure. Um, and I'm probably going to ruin it <laughs> because I need to make a custom Ahura. Um, and uh, this will do just nicely. This will do just nicely. Now, to be fair, I actually already have like two or three of these. Um, so one of the things that I don't really talk about a whole lot is that I don't actually buy to collect. Um, well, that's not true. I buy to collect um, because collecting is fun. But I buy um, mostly to um, fill in gaps, like the things that I never got, things that may be solved, you know, with uh, with with the Playmates line coming back to Star Trek. Um, um, but I don't buy to collect. I don't buy to keep figures in the packaging. I don't buy to keep figures up on the shelf um, or mint in the shelf, I just sh I should say. I actually have these figures all over my office, you know, more than just what I have on my desk. I don't, uh, most of the time, they're, they're all over this room. And they're also with me at work, too. Um, yeah, but I don't buy to collect. Um, they're toys. Toys are meant to be played with. Toys are meant to be enjoyed. Um, can't really do that if they're sitting up on the wall, you know, in a box. Um, hey, that got a little, that got a little soapboxy right there. <laughs> um, ah, okay, here we go. Another gap filled with a all good things Jean-Luc Picard. Um, not at all what uh, we will find Jean-Luc Picard looking like in, in his 90s as featured in All Good Things. Uh, we will find that Patrick Stewart still very much looks like Patrick Stewart in his 90s. <laughs> but they try. Um, yeah, nice to actually have this figure. Um, although I gotta say, looking at it head on, see a little Riker in that face? Probably just me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool. Um, not one of my favorite figures, but when we get to customs, I will show you what I have used this figure for. It is the Maquis Soldier? Maki Fighter, Maki Fighter, I like that better than Soldier. Uh, Chakotay. Um, I don't 
care for the texture of the shirt, or rather the paint. I don't care for the paint on the shirt. Um, it makes it look a little too clown. But, um, you know, I guess it's nice that we got this. Um, I still would have preferred a uh, second Captain Janeway in the second wave of Star Trek <laughs> Voyager figures, which we never got. I mean, they only made two and one was an exclusive mail away. That's actually kind of hard to find. Uh, let's see. Well, we've got a TOS figure in the Tholian Web era space suit, but I think this isn't Kirk. I think, oh, it is. It is the Toy Fair exclusive mail away Spock from the Tholian Web. Um, getting a lot of those exclusive figures in here. In fact, this entire lot has had three of the four from Toy Fair. I think the only one that I haven't seen is the Tosh Yar one. Um, so let's keep digging and see maybe if that's in here too. Hopefully it isn't. Oh. Holy cow. Um, there are so I don't really want to brag about how much I spent on this, but I only spent $80 on this box for all of these figures, for the, 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 the Jordy, the first box, and this big ass box right here. And I got another random rare figure. Um, it's the duty uniform, it, it's, It is the dress uniform Leonard McCoy. I'm really <laughs> surprised to see this in here. Um, wow, okay. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I am <laughs> really surprised to see this in here. Um, it's not as ornate as, say, like the Kirk or the Spock from that set, but I think this was one of those ones that was like, they only made like a couple thousand of these. I'm really shocked to see this in here. I'm really shocked to see this one in here. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm making out like a bandit here. Um, another one that's kind of, harder to find just simply because it came so late in the in the in the series line and it's not one of their best I would very quickly swap the head out on this one but it's it's Keiko O'Brien um but she does have she does have the later in line um swivel on the thigh um, I just don't understand why she's so drab. She looks like she's in like section 31 or something. You know, that's not Keiko. Keiko is, is very bright, very lively. Um, what a weird figure that is. <sighs> All right, so I can compare these two since I now have them both up here. Um, so here's Here's the first version of Guinan. And here's the second version of Guinan. Now, you tell me, which one looks more lively? I think it's the purple one. Um, now, I can't complain with the face on either of these. Um, those are, I mean, that's, you look at either of these figures and you're just like, that's whoopee. 110%, that is whoopee. Um, but I just like, I just like the Generations one a little bit more. Um, let's see, so we have here one of my nemesis. Um, this body is not my favorite, but <laughs> I feel like this is even worse than the standard one. 
It's Lieutenant Thomas Riker. And boy, if I didn't like this figure before when it was Will in the torn uniform, I definitely don't like it when all they did was cover up the tears with paint. Like, you didn't even bother to re-sculpt the body. You didn't even bother to use the generic body, like, like as featured on uh, uh, Miles O'Brien. Um, I, you, you, you just, you just, you just painted over the existing Will figure to make Thomas, but you still used the shitty body that you had before. I hate this body so much. The Will Riker figure is far and away my least favorite figure. And the paint job on this one is like, look at the back there. It doesn't even connect. It doesn't even connect. Will, ah, oh, no, not Will, Thomas. Thomas, I think I like you even less than Will. I think I like you even less than Will. Although I do like the like, hey, like almost in a like, I know Kung Fu type of pose. <laughs> uh, boy, oh boy, do I not like the Will Riker figure body. All right, let's let's pick up the pace here and start blowing through the rest of these because I think I've only pulled out maybe half of this box already. We're probably like an hour into this video. Uh, we have... Um, God, wouldn't it be fucked up? Wouldn't it just be like messed up if this were actually one of the real tapestry cards and it's loose? Like there's no real way to know. Um, I guess, actually that's not true because the feet, um, there's no uh, numbering on the feet and if I'm not mistaken, um, that's, that would probably be the telltale giveaway. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that just be messed up if this was an actual 1701 tapestry Picard and it's just loose? Like if I flipped the feet over and there it was like, you know, like, you know, like number like 602 out of 1700. <laughs> oh, that would be really messed up, wouldn't it? I'd get a laugh of it, but a lot of you out there would be really, really upset about that. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have Jadzia. Oh, this feels like this has been played with a lot. Um, extremely loose waist and limbs here, uh, but it's Jadzia in her traditional Starship duty uniform before uh, she switched over to the space station uniform, arriving on Deep Space Nine. And uh, to pair her with that, we have a Julian Bashir in the uh, Starship uniform before he switched over to the spaceship, uh, space station uniform. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, right, what else do we got here? Uh, we have a Spock uh, from the uh, TOS box set. Classic Spock set. Uh, cool. Could always use more of those. Uh, we have a... Ah, we've got a Trial and Tribulations Odo here. Um, now, one of the things that I've always wanted to try and do is to take this body and um, adapt it somehow to Worf. I don't know if it's actually going to work just simply because, um, simply because it's so thin. Um, and whereas Worf is very barrel chested. Um, but because I would love to have an actual accurate Worf uh, since he was a part of that episode and we got everybody else but him. Um, oh, all right, very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, we have, oh, wow, again, just like nice playmates sculpting right here. We have a Nausicaan. Um, he even comes with accessories uh, for you uh, to play Domjot with. 
in the bag. That's very nice. Um, again, another one of those like just great Playmate sculpts that, you know, I didn't have to go this hard. I didn't have to go this hard for a Nausicaan. Um, but man, like even, even, even like the texture on like the outfit is like really nice. Um, oddly proportioned, like I said, like the legs are really small, but the body is really tall, uh, much like uh, Essok down there, but I'm glad I actually have this figure. Nice little fill in. And speaking of filling in gaps, I, think, I don't think I've ever actually looked at one of these for real, uh, but we have Traveler. Um, one of those like to me, like no brainer figures. I mean, like he is in three episodes across next gen. So I feel like he absolutely deserves a figure. Um, ooh, ooh, you could totally turn that face into a Mr. Hom figure pretty easily, I think. Pretty easily, I think. Um, take the... Oh my God. Did they use, let me see if I can get close enough to this. I can't get close enough. Are those Ninja Turtle hands? Did they recycle Ninja Turtle hands for this figure? I think they did. Well, like I said, like I've always said, and I've said twice before in this video, the Playmates line fits seamlessly together. Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, Toxic Crusaders, Dick Tracy, all of their lines all go hand in hand. And I swear to God, that is the mold for a Ninja Turtle hand. I swear to God, I wish I had one of those figures here with me right now. I, just to compare, I would bet money they re they reused that from a Ninja Turtle figure. Mm. Uh, we got adult. Uh, we got one of the the the, the Gal Ducat figures from First Wave of Deep Space Nine that looks nothing like Gal Ducat. Um. We've got one of the really boring, super boring figures, uh, that being the uh, Unification Romulan Picard. Eh, eh, you know. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's see if we compare this to its Wave 1 counterpart. Let's see. We have Lieutenant Commander Data. Oh, and we've got the arm piece intact. So that's him in the Wave 1 duty uniform. Or no, rather the Wave 2 duty uniform from Seasons 1 and 2. That's the combination of words that I was looking for. And we are towards the end here. Um, there are not many figures left in this box. Um, we will very nicely pull out a Voyager Neelix. Um, one of, you know, again, like one of those figures that I think is really nice, but for the life of me, how rarely do you see a dour face like that on Ethan Phillips' performance? This figure should be smiling. Smiling. Like, not looking like he's nervous or constipated <laughs> there should be a big old smile on neelix's face not this nervous nelly that they gave us um <sighs> we got a vogon from captain's holiday um again like like just the random alien figures that we get you know, even though there are a lot of these are one-off aliens, they're really nice looking figures. And I can't complain about that. I can't complain when the sculpting on a figure is really nice. When the paint decal is that like iridescent color, 
on, like, like, like it's on the back of the head. Like it, you're not gonna see that. But they went with a really nice iridescent paint on there. And that looks just really nice. It's little touches like that. On top of just like, like, like I know you can't, if you have the figure, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about, but just the texture on the, the, the body of the figure, just like you can feel, it makes it feel like it's actually like, like, like a uniform. Um, it's, it's, it's just really nice. I, I can never complain with the, the alien figures in the Star Trek line. They're always really good, unless it comes down to something like nice likeness, like that gold Ducat figure. Because, because even the Cardassian figure, and I'm actually going to take this one out, you know, even like that Cardassian body, like, you can see the texture in the armor, even though it doesn't look like Mark Alamo, you can see where they really just kind of went out of their way to make the figure look really nice. Even if the likeness doesn't work. All right, so let's see here. We have ourselves a Lieutenant Junior Grade Jordi LaForge. Season one, Jordi. Nice, nice, nice. Um, oh, to match the Tholian Web Spock. We got ourselves a Tholian Web Jim Kirk. Oh, what else do we got in here? Very nice, very nice, very nice. Because I already have one of these, but I have been wanting to make a follow-up custom figure. We've got a Generations Chekhov, um, which I'm gonna pull the head off of and turn into a Wrath of Khan maroon movie uniform Sulu, uh, just simply because uh, we never got all of the original series cast members in the maroon uniform. They made the body. Oh, why didn't you just release Uhura, McCoy, and Sulu in them? Uh, why didn't you do that? And Spock too. Kind of seemed like a no-brainer to me, but you know, whatever. Just be bitter about it. Um, oh, here's a figure that I've never bought. Just because, I mean, <sighs> and I can honestly say now that I'm actually looking at this, it's not a nice looking figure. Um, I think a lot of the praise that I was giving Playmates earlier um, for alien bodies really kind of uh, falls apart right here, just simply due to proportions. Um, proportionizing. Playmates didn't get this one right. Uh, this is the uh, last last outpost accurate uh, Ferengi. Um, and as we all know, that uh, didn't really work. And just looking at this figure, um, I mean, come on, the hands are m mutinous. They're, they're elongated. And then that torso on the body is just so squat. It's so disproportionate to the top and half and bottom half of the body. This is not a very good figure at all. And I can see why I have pretty much ignored buying one of these for a very long time. Um, even when the line came out, I kind of said, I think I'll skip these um, because I much prefer, I prefer my Ferengi Deep Space Nine style. That's the flavor that I like. All right, so we also have, uh, we got a lot of, a lot of little gaps getting filled here, at least for me. We have a uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Wharf. Very, very nice to actually have that as a part of my collection. Um, we only got a couple left. Now I actually have her, but Mine is my original one, and she's she got so frail that her arms fell off. Uh, but we have uh, Ensign Rowe. Uh, Roe Lauren, um, not, not pinpoint accurate, but really close 
to capturing Michelle Forbes likeness. Um, this was always one of those figures that I dug a lot. Um, and I like, I like this body. Um, I don't know why, I don't know why Playmates, you know, didn't utilize the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the female body duty uniform. Like we could have gotten a, a, a Shelby out of this. So we're going to wrap up with the final three figures here. I see a Gem Hadar soldier. Um, one of those figures that I just don't have in my collection for whatever reason. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Dig it. Dig that connecting Tetracell white tube that goes from the body into the neck. Um, that is something you've got to be very careful with because I don't think that detaches. Nope, that feels like that is molded right into there. So you gotta be careful how you use the body for this. Um, what's nice about this figure is that you can buy like, much like the Borg drones, you can buy 10 of them and you have yourselves a little army. Uh, one of the nice things about, uh, about these figures. Um, not really much to say about this. I do dig the head. It is not the nicest sculpt, you know, compared to like Essok or anything. I would say this is probably on par with um, um, the Gold Ducat. Um, but still, I'm glad I have this in my collection. And our final two figures is a Wave 1 Julian Bashir um, in the standard uniform. And happy about this I I was looking at one of these and the problem with this figure is it's usually like 30 40 bucks a pop it's Kate it's Kate it's Kate it's Kate it's Kate it's a loose Janeway figure um wow I'm really glad I'm really glad I bought this set um, because this figure usually goes for about 40 bucks on its own um, I don't care that it's loose um, I I'm very 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 glad with this purchase um, in here we've got like I said like three figures between now between Janeway the um, uh, dress uniform McCoy and the where no man has gone before Kirk. Those are three figures right there that alone would probably fetch me about 80 bucks. And I paid 80 bucks for everything in this box, that box, and that other small box. Um, I'm really happy. <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. That is a boatload of action figures. Nicolino! Ah! <laughs> So thank you all so much for hanging out with me. It's been absolutely joy seeing all of your wonderful smiling faces. Uh, there's one thing you can be rest assured to know about me is that like, I'm gonna bring you Star Trek toys. I'm gonna bring you Playmate Star Trek toys every time. And thanks for hanging out with me. I'm probably the biggest toy haul vlog that I'm ever probably gonna do because I don't think I'm ever gonna find a bargain like this again. I don't think I will. But I've been your favorite former Twink Ace. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. If you liked this video and want to see more, head on down below, 
like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. The goddamn YouTube algorithm loves when you do that trifecta. And I do too, because I want to make sure that I see you all again sometime soon. I've been your favorite former twink. Live long and prosper. Toys, 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 toys. Toys, 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 toys. Toys, 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 toys. Toys, 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 toys. Toys, toys.